and welcome back. Now, Christmas is the title of this video, as you saw, and you're thinking, what? Already, given that I'm recording this in not quite September yet, but then again, you've got to be forward thinking, haven't you? Now, secondly, this stuff on my desk might look a li little bit deja vu-ish. You're thinking, hang on a minute, this doesn't look very Christmassy at all. What's going on? Well, the truth of the matter is, this isn't what I want to show you. This is just something that came up over the week. So let's see uh, what we can see on the desk. Now, as you can see, this is an RFID reader. And if I just zoom in onto this bit here, it actually says RFID reader. Now, we've covered all this in a previous video all about RFID. In fact, I had a question only today from somebody on the YouTube channel asking a question. Uh, now, th So you might be thinking, well, what on earth are you doing with it again? Well, the fact of the matter is, because I had all the code and the instructions, I put this together very, very quickly last week because I wanted to test whether it could read the uh, chip in my pet's neck, you know, the, uh, the chip pet ID. Because I read on a forum somewhere that it should be able to do that. Well, I'm sorry to say it can't. So I wanted to read the uh, chip on a stray cat we're feeding. So I thought I'd build this and try it on my own cat first. Now, there we are. Look, it reads that fob. No trouble at all. That's the decimal uh, number of this particular fob. But try as I might, uh, I could not get it to read the chip on my pet. So that this is no good as a chip reader for pets. Just thought I'd mention that in passing, and because it just happened to come up in a question today about what can be done about writing to Sector 1 on the card. Secondly, uh, something else. You may remember months ago I was toying with the idea of um, a solar cell. Well, this is it. It finally arrived. And as you can see, it's pretty damn big, isn't it? I mean, this is not going to be for some portable equipment. However, there's a link to this. I mean, I got this um, on... Must have been bang good, I guess. Yeah, for quite a low price. Somebody did comment on my YouTube channel that you can buy them for, well, quite a reasonable price, actually. I was, I was moaning that you could only get them for a few pounds, but in fact, this was quite cheap. And it was even, I think, from the EU website, so that came pretty quick. However, that is not now going to become part of the project. This was from the CAT transmitter project, but we've sort of gone away from that now. So what I have got, in fact... And what I'm going to take on holiday with me is one of these. Now, this is a power bank. And if you remember a previous video, I actually created my own power bank, which is what I was going to take on holiday with me. But then I saw this for a very good price. And more to the point, it's solar powered as well. So there's a couple of batteries in here. I'm guessing of the 18650 type. Plus, it's solar powered. Now, where I'm going on holiday later on this year, it's going to be very sunny indeed. So I can just get this out, lay it on the table while I'm having a coffee or perhaps a beer or two. You never know, dear. Um, and hopefully, that will get charged up in next to no time. Well, at least within a couple of beers worth or something. So that means my phone should never die because my phone does suck the power quite a bit when uh, I'm on holiday. I don't know why. So that's... Uh, one thing and also with it came this braided cable or at least I ordered it with it this braided cable and as you can see it's just a standard USB cable normal USB A to micro but it is braided and that makes it extremely strong far stronger say than one of these this one which is all plastic and it can easily get torn and whatever I don't believe this will this is you know braided it's strong and of course it's round, uh, which makes it just that little bit easier to uh, coil up and things. Now, while as, when I got this, I thought, now that is really good. The fact you can get them in different colours, and I've definitely got a blue one just to match the blue, really. Well, why not, you know? I thought, well, what other colours can I get? Because if I just pan back with my camera now, if you look over there, you can see lots of black cables. And then there's this one green one right at the back because that is now plugged into my USB hub at the top of my desk and that is what's going to power um, future projects now not only did I get that one I thought well let's go for broke and get quite a few so I did so here they all are so these cables are now in multicolors, which enables me to identify what sort of cable it is so now I've got all different colours, so I can have red for power USBs, things charging up. I can have yellow and green, so the green one at the back there plus this yellow one can then be for like my two um, Arduino type um, boards. And uh, well, I've got another red one there. I think I've got somewhere, I think I've even got, yeah, 
here I've got another yellow one as well. So there's two of each plus a spare. So at least I can now identify all my cables at the back when I've got all these plugged in without picking up constantly the wrong ones. So that was um, quite an interesting find. That was honestly on Banggood. In fact, I can show you that now. If I look at the um, browser window, here we are. All different colours. Uh, two metres. I got the two metre length because I didn't want them sort of, you know, taut across my desk in any way. I want them dropping down the back, if at all possible. Um, only one pound three each. Look, I mean, they are branded two meters, and I got, I think I got two of each, but not purple. So there we are. So that was uh, a good little deal, and you might want to get one or two of those as well, just so you can identify which one connects to your hub rather than which one connects to your phone and so forth. Um, now, what else did I get? Right, let's go. Let's move on now to the reason for this entire Christmas uh, video. So let me clear all this out and come back when I've got this board set up with my Christmas stuff. And here we are back with our Christmas stuff. Now, as you can see here, there's a little um, setup on the board here with some flashing lights, red, yellow, and green, very Christmassy, really. And it all started off, well, that, well, that started off with this, but let's have a bit of background first. Back in March, I mentioned to you that um, I'd bought a little Christmas tree project and uh, I intended to do something with it. How did this all transpire? Well, years and years and years ago, my daughter made this little thing. Now you can't really see that very well, so let me give you a bigger picture. There we are. Now this is um, a small little soldering circuit, really. You put on your however many LEDs they are, there's a couple of transistors in there, and um, Basically, it's an ass stable, or might be even two mon two ass stables. I don't know. Uh, basically, a flip flop, and what it does is um, it first of all flashes this set of LEDs down here, then this set, or it might be half and half. I can't remember the exact details. But even having these two independent flashings, they s slowly got out of sync, of course. So that it actually added a level of interest here as they started to flash. It actually looked quite nice. More to the point, it let my daughter have a gentle introduction to soldering things like this. And we've still got this little item today. So what happened was, when I saw the uh, Christmas tree kit on, where was it, Gear Best, this one here. There we are. Now I got this back in, I think it was uh, March. I might have mentioned it in one of my Postman videos. Now at the moment you can see it's £6.66. Oh, there's a number. Oh dear. Never mind. Um, <laughs> quite ironic, isn't it? Uh, anyway, this uh, I never bought it for £6.66. No way. I bought it, I think it was something like $5 or something at the time. And that's before the pound had fallen off the edge of a cliff regarding the dollar to pound ratio. So I think I got it for about three quid. Anyway, this um, this entire kit, I mean, it looks quite nice. Look, It's all very simple. It's good for beginners. But you do have something like 36 LEDs here and a nice couple of uh, soldering boards and a base. You even get a little adapter, although I'm not sure that's going to fit really for, with what I want to do. But anyway, I thought, well, I can buy this and then we'll adapt it for use with an Arduino. I mean, we can, so we will. So on here, there is in fact a circuit diagram. If I scroll down a bit past all the pictures, look, there we are. There's a circuit diagram. And I thought, ah, oh, three transistors, that's great, three channels. They're all connected up in multiples of these LEDs. And in fact, that's 18. I didn't realise until yesterday, in fact, there's 36 on there. So whether they've got six channels or they're just paralleled up, I'm not sure. I haven't really got that far. But I thought, well, what we can do, look, we're un instead of driving these transistors from themselves, if you like, to have them cascading and have them probably flashing or whatever it is they do, We'll drive these transistors from a pulse width modulated output of the Arduino and cause them to fade in and out nicely at various speeds. We can do what we like, can't we, in the code? Hence the thing you have on my desk now. Now let me just turn this potentiometer down to nothing. Right, now what you're seeing here, let me zoom in a bit on the LEDs. Right, now let's assume that each one of those LEDs is uh, representing one of those channels that I showed you on that thing. And as you can see, they're fading up and down, 
not quite at the speed I want at the moment, but they're all independently fading. So the code is a good example of doing many things at once. Uh, there's no delays used in this code at all, so that would be quite an interesting little uh, technical sample for you to try out. But anyway, these are all fading out then. I'm sorry, Max, I've got to use uh, my pointer. I'm going to change this in future videos so I don't start shorting out things. Um, so these are the three channels that are all going to fade in and out. And we can change the code to make them go fast or slow or whatever we want to do. And then I thought, well, we could make them flash as well. Or, hence uh, the microphone thing I showed you at the beginning, namely this. Now you can find these all over the internet. And they're only about a pound. Um, I bought mine from eBay, but I'm not quite sure where that is anymore. So let's go back to the um, browser window. There we are. Now, I got mine from... Not here, but it, it was a similar price. So it's uh, one pound one look. I mean, there's nothing to it really. Effectively, it's, it's a microphone connected to um, a comparator. The comparator is a, is it a 393? Just a minute, I'll have a look. Yeah, it's a LLM 393 comparator. We've got um, a variable resistor here. And the idea being, that uh, you get two outputs. So you've got plus and minus. Also, you've got an analog output. That's this one over this side. And um, a digital one, the other side. Um, the idea being that when you plug this in, you can set this potentiometer here, this variable resistor, so that it's just not quite making this pin here high. Or it might be low. can't remember which way around it is now. But as soon as there's any sound here, it, it flickers this high. Or or well, and in fact they both work simultaneously you have an analog output on this side a0 as you can see there a0 and it's just the output from here i think directly to here i'm not sure if this is acting as an op amp can't remember but i had fun in games with this basically when you turn this potentiometer for the digital output it also affects the analog output which it's not supposed to do and the other thing is it's noisy my goodness is it noisy um, there was so much noise on this that when I was using the analog output, it was jumping all over the place. So I thought, having spent an hour, at least an hour, trying to get this to work, I thought, do you know what? I'll just use a standard electret microphone myself with a single stage transistor as an amplifier and just forget all this, frankly, use this for something else at a future date. So that's what I've got down here. So what we've got here, in fact, is a single um, microphone feeding into a single transistor, a um, couple of capacitor, uh, well, one capacitor and a um, couple of resistors. And let me show you, in fact, the circuit diagram. So much easier to understand, isn't it, and all this nonsense. So this is the circuit diagram that we've got. So we have um, the microphone here being um, fed with a 4K7, could be up to 10K, really, a resistor. The output of that going through a one microfarad capacitor into the base of a, an MPN transistor. And I did have two in my kit, two N3904s and a BC548. The HFE or gain of this one was higher. So I just picked this one and put it in there. Comes through, The collector goes through a 10K resistor and the output of our 0.1 to 1. I'm still experimenting with all this. Um, and that's it really. I mean, this is reasonably quiet. And the output is going via a 10K variable resistor, just like that little module. But the good thing about this is it's quiet. Talking of quiet, though, if we look at uh, this behind it, these pulse width modulated output wires, all this stuff here, they're going to be noisy themselves. So I may have to decouple this a bit more here. I've tried running it off 3 volts 3 in case that was like separately decoupled anyway, and it seemed to work fairly well. So that's... The circuit I'm using now, not that module. And I'm going to experiment a little bit more with this before I actually put it all together. But I've got to build that Christmas tree first. So that's that bit. So as you can see, at the moment it's fading in and out quite nicely. But if I turn up the uh, resistor here, and I'm going to play you some music. Unfortunately, it won't be Britney Spears or whatever, because I'm not allowed to do that. Google are quite strict uh, what you can and can't do. So I'm just going to play you some music, but you'll get the idea. Right, so the Muzak's playing, and as you can see now, 
let me just turn it up a tad right so there we are now we can turn the sensitivity up or down via this resistor here if you think oh that's a bit much let's turn it down a bit there we are oh, too far perhaps so what happens now is that they flash in time but when the music stops after three seconds what's supposed to happen is it the Arduino detects that there's been no sound for three seconds and will revert to um, fade mode so if I be stumm for three seconds we should get some fading on there well there we are it's just starting now look right I think you can see what we're saying there so now my voice is being picked up by the microphone so of course it's flashing again but you saw that the the fading effect started when there was no sound on here which is exactly what we want so the Christmas tree can be put next to a telly or a hi-fi or something to be flashing away but in the quieter moments or between tracks or something it will just go into automatic fade mode let's just watch that once more So there we are and then it will pick up my voice and start flashing again so I'm thinking that each one of these three outputs they're independent PWM outputs from the pins that support that I think I've got them as uh, 9 10 and 11 on here 9 10 and 11 um, they're good PMW outputs to use incidentally because they don't affect the millis timer and things like that which we are using extensively in the code here so I'm going to connect those up to those transistors and hopefully that will be okay to uh, run that Christmas tree off and then of course put this in the base somewhere um, and basically just build all this in with a, with a, a nano or something underneath and that Christmas tree project should be quite easy to do now the, the actual bits and pieces I've got here let me just zoom back out right so these are all the bits I haven't even unpacked it yet it's been like this since March would you believe and I know I had to do it or wanted to do it in fact now that's the um, that's the power supply I don't know I'm always a bit wary about power supplies from, from the Far East what does that say how many volts it says 5 volts at 500 milliamps mm, okay well the Arduino can't supply that much uh, not with its onboard adapter so we'll have to take the the output probably where we plug this in to um, a wall wall or something nine volts we'll probably take a tapping off that and create our own little supply for the lamps the actual Christmas tree lamps so here's all the kits the kit pieces rather and as you can see it's not big I mean it's, it's fairly small it's a small little item that you can put anywhere and it's 3d so that fits on there like that there we are look so you have all your LEDs running down the side but they're not in sequence if they're anything like the Velleman project um, kit that I got from Maplins the LEDs are sort of spaced out around so channel 1 LED might be there 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 and there and then channel 2 spaced out somewhere else I don't know because I haven't really looked at this at all the first time I've got it out in fact but I'm convinced once this is built we'll find out where the base um, inputs are to those transistors cut the track wire them into this nano as it will be then and uh, that will be standing on its little base with all its little uh, LEDs flashing around so underneath this under here we can put the Arduino you know make a little base for it I've got a piece of um, smoked perspex in fact so this could easily bolt onto a piece of smoked perspex and have the nano in between We'll see but that's what I'm going to build and uh, when it's built possibly the next video maybe the video after that but basically I'm giving you early warning if you want to do something like this either get your kids involved or get you involved just for a, a simple little bit of nonsense really I say it's a simple bit of nonsense that one that we built with my daughter that uh, I showed you from Velleman although I did buy it from Maplin that one there we've got this and it's 
you know, I don't know what it is now, 20 years or something, 15 years, something like that. And, you know, it brings back the good memories. So if you were to build this with your kids, not that one, this one here, if you were to build that with your kids, you know, it's something to look back on in the years, isn't it? And, of course, it's a good excuse for plugging in an Arduino into something and having added value. Right, I'm going to call a halt to this now because there's so much to do. I was going to give you an update of my rain sensor um, project, not the transmitter, that's all been done and dusted, and the receiver now is fully built, apart from one little touchpad. I've got some, I took some pictures as I was building it, I'm not going to make a whole video of it, just like a five minute summary, but I'm still waiting for the touchpad to arrive. If you remember, it was a little cat's face, the thing you put on a collar for a cat, an ID disc basically. That'll be arriving in the next I don't know, two or three days. I'll plug that in and um, then it's good to go. It looks really nice actually. The case that I bought, I might have mentioned it in a previous video. I mean it wasn't cheap but it does look good in a home environment. We're not talking about a standard project box now, we're talking something that you could stand up um, on the mantelpiece or next to the telly or whatever and uh, have it work. And it did work but there are still some issues with that rain sensor. If I mentioned previously that it was getting dirty and corroded you wait till you see the pictures next time. That's uh, something that's really going to have to be addressed. And I've moved it as well for reasons that will become clear next time. OK, that's all I've got time for now. I'm really rushed off my feet doing all this stuff, especially with the Christmas stuff coming up. So, got any queries, or any suggestions, anything at all, do leave comments under the video. Thank you so much for watching and all the comments. It's really giving me impetus for doing all this stuff. So thank you very much indeed. And if you think the video is worthwhile, give me a thumbs up. Do spread the word and I'll see you in the next video. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. Please leave comments down below, subscribe, share and give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.